This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people where millions get to explore together. Skillshare has got thousands of classes. As artists, you're going to love discovering topics in fine art, illustration, and more. Lots of Skillshare classes are under 60 minutes. With short lessons, you can fit them into the busiest of schedules. We're always working on developing and increasing our online presence at ArtProf. So I decided to watch Going Viral, Write, Film, and Make Content People Share with Matt Belisai. I really liked how comprehensive this class was. It covered important topics like how to write more effective tweets, strategies for how to approach a viral video, and how I can develop my own voice online. I came away from this class with terrific concrete tips that I'm really looking forward to implementing in our content at ArtProf online. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Hello, everybody. Today, we are doing a portrait in soft pastel. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I decided to do a warm up first. Oftentimes, when I'm sketching a portrait, I get a little uptight. Who here gets a little nervous when they start sketching out a portrait? There's a lot of baggage that happens, and I just need to warm up. So I'm going to do a very quick sketch, not because I'm trying to make a good drawing, but because I just got to move my hand. So if you were an athlete, this would be like doing your stretches, doing some sit-ups. I mean, if you're playing a sport, you're not just going to start playing the game. You're going to want to move around a little bit first. And that's essentially what I'm doing right now. trying to stay really loose. And it's hard at first, you're not gonna start loose. It takes a little bit of time to get there, which is fine. And you'll notice too, in my warm up, I do really try to draw with the side of the soft pastel because especially at the beginning of any portrait, it's a lot of blocking in of big shapes. And that's the experience I wanna give myself. By the way, I would love it if some of you would like to draw along with me. The reference photo is in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, shame on you. It's where all the cool kids hang out. The invite link to our Discord is in the YouTube video description below. Everybody who's in the Discord, put some peer pressure <laughs> on the people in the chat who are not in Discord because you're all missing out. It is so fun in there. I love being there so much that I've actually had to put limits <laughs> on when I let myself go in there because I see people and they need help and I just want to do it, but I need to put some limits. Otherwise I'd never get anything done. Tell me in the chat who here is going to draw Deep D with us. Deep D is an actress and she had these professionally shot by Deborah Lopez. If you want to see Deborah's Instagram, go down to the YouTube video description below and you can see some of her other work. Deep D has worked with her quite a bit and it's really nice to work from a professional photograph. I mean, that's not very common to have such a good reference. Your average person doesn't really get professional photos shot. I was thinking to myself, when I was getting ready for this tree, I was like, oh, what do I draw? I feel like I've used a lot of the images on our 
Flickr page too many times and I didn't want to make it repetitive for people. And I thought, oh, it'll be way more fun if we don't just draw some random person, but we draw somebody we all know. In this case, it's Deep Deep. It's really nice to have a personal connection to your topic. So often I see people, they want to do a portrait and they just find some random person on Pinterest to draw. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think it's more a portrait when you know the person because portraits are about the person. It's not just about physical description. Who is that person? What are you trying to convey about them? Oh, it looks terrible. <laughs> it doesn't even look like her. I don't care. I'm just warming up. <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> oh, I, I confess, I feel a little pressure because <laughs> I know Deep D, I know Deep D's going to see this. You all know, I'm like, okay, this is pressure because I don't know. Sometimes when it is a random person off the internet, like nobody really cares. Nobody's going to pick at it. I mean, I suppose if it's a celebrity, people say, oh, that doesn't look like Will Smith. But it's not quite the same thing. Will Smith is not going to see it and give me trouble about it. I mean, Deep D's not going to give me trouble. That's the thing she's not going to bother it's not like i'm doing a commission but it's still pressure because i know she's going to see it and i think portraits have that psychological baggage it's just really hard to get past like i know i'm not supposed to stress about likeness i know that doing it is a whole other story all right i think i'm just about warmed up Okay, good. There's my super wonky <laughs> warm up. I'm not even going to look at it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to start judging. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. The supplies I'm going to be using today are these Rembrandt soft pastels. I really like this brand a lot, but it's not cheap. If you can afford a set, it's fantastic, but they're not that affordable for most people. They're very soft. I like them a lot. But I'm also using these Holbein soft pastels. And I guess the biggest difference is that these are square, like they have sharp edges. And you'll notice that the Rembrandts are round. It's just a matter of personal preference. I don't find it be a big deal, the particular shape, but that's fine. All right, I'm going to do my initial line work and then I'll take a break and go through the comments. I will not do comments and drawing at the same time. <laughs> I can't do it, but I will come back to all of you at some point. I like using yellow ochre as a starting color because white is just too bright and then I end up with an x-ray vision. But then I also don't want something really dark like this dark brown, because that just feels too permanent. And the yellow ochre is a nice solution. I got to figure out the scale first, because what I like about the photo, I like that the photo, the hair is so dramatic. And I love the orange in the scene. So I definitely want to add that. And so actually the first part of a portrait a lot of it is just placing the figure because I want to draw big enough that I actually have space to make the strokes that I want. On the other hand, I don't want the figure to be so big that I miss out on the parts of the portrait that I think are important. For example, the hair is really important and I don't want to crop the hair. So it is useful to ask yourself, what part of the portrait do I really want to focus on? I mean, maybe somebody else would look at this portion and say, oh, I don't really need the hair. I don't need it to be so prominent. I do. That's something I would like to emphasize. And again, it, it depends on the artist. See, I really want to get the bottom of the hair in there. I'm going to wipe it out and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll move it up. 
But do you see how the initial sketch is still there? But I can totally draw over that. Don't be afraid to redraw things. How many of you, <laughs> it's confession time, <laughs> do a sketch and then just leave it? You, you don't move it around. That's what I'm doing. I'm moving it up and I'm making it a little smaller. Because you know what? I don't care who you are. You're not getting it to where you want it in the first shot. That just is not the case. But you have to be willing to make big changes like this. And yes, I know it's a mess, but it's got to start that way. And I'm not going to bother with an eraser because I feel like the eraser would disrupt my rhythm. And so instead, I'm just going to draw so lightly that it's easy for me to go over things if I need to. By the way, if you're thinking you're going to add that hair, quote, when you're ready, uh-uh. <laughs> this hair has to start from the beginning. You cannot add the hair in last minute. A lot of people do. If you do that, it's going to look like a wig. It's going to look like it has no relationship. Okay, this is better because now I'm fitting in these bottom chunks of the hair and we do have a tutorial on how to draw hair and also i have an anatomy lecture that talks about how to subdivide the hair because hair drives everybody up the wall it's not easy but what i try to do is look for the big shapes there's a very large shape and this big curl is fairly dramatic her ear is a little bit covered but i'm just estimate about where I think it is. And there's a chunk over here. And there's this beautiful strand. I'm not gonna add it right now. It's a little bit too soon for that. Here's the jawbone. Jawbone is really important because in the beginning, the face, it just feels really mushy and the jawbone is a nice corner that feels very concrete. And it helps me a lot. Okay, now notice there's a chunk of hair here, but then the hair back here is going in a different direction. Okay, let's block out the facial features. I like to start with the nose. It doesn't really matter where you start, but I like the nose because it's in the middle, okay? If you start from the eye, it's like you're moving down and then maybe you might not be looking at the proportions very well. So if I start with the nose, then I can compare the eye to the nose, compare the mouth to the nose. It just tends to push you towards the center, and then you're more likely for the proportions to make more sense. Okay, let's get in the eye sockets, nasal bone. Now, for the lip, I just do the center line between the lips. What a lot of people do with the lips is they trace the contour of the lips. How many of you do that? <laughs> this, this is confession time stream. <laughs> How many people will just trace the top of the lip and the lower of the lip? That's not a great idea because then you're not really looking at the structure very much. So if I look at, the lip is wider than the nose. So I'm gonna remind myself of that. This is the philtrum which is that little line in between the nose and the lip. Okay, there's the middle of the lip. I'm just gonna do the bottom of the lip like that. Oh geez, I always run on a chin. Crap, that means I'm gonna have to move everything down. <sighs> okay, that means that this should actually be down here. Okay, so this curl was up here and I just moved it down because I had to move down the chin. It's annoying. It's like a domino effect. Like you fix one thing, God fix three other things. Okay, I'm going to get in. Let's just say start with the upper lid. Like this. I feel like the eyes are too close together. Let's move this one over. So does everybody see it's a lot of adjustments when you're doing a portrait. You move a little left, move it to the right. And you'll notice on the nose, 
that this eye on the right is a little behind the nose. Which actually means I didn't push that further enough. Let's get that out. Oh, this is a really hard contour over here. I feel like I'm running out of space. Oh, I feel like her nose is too big. I always feel like the nose is too big. It doesn't even matter who I'm drawing. Oh, okay, here is where you start picking. Uh, who here, tell me in the chat, gets intimidated when you draw a portrait? How many of you feel pressure? That, oh, I'm drawing a portrait. It has to look like the person. You got to forget about likeness. That is the kiss of death. The second I start saying, does it look like Deep Deep? Hmm, I don't think it really looks like Deep Deep. That's not helping me. How is that making the drawing better? It's not. And what really matters is looking at the shapes. Okay, does everyone see this? I drew the eyebrow three times. It is not bad <laughs> to not nail it the first time through. Ah, shoot, there's not enough space. See, I got to move the hair now. Although, maybe I'm just drawing the eyes too big I need to go up a little bit. Okay, let's move the eyes up. I think they're too big and they're too low. So I'm going to move the eyes up to here. I'm going to draw them smaller. If you're going to do portraits, you have to be willing to fix and adjust a lot. Because if you're not willing to adjust, you're not going to be able to fix all the things that you just inherently are not going to nail the first time. That's better. Okay, I think I had to move it up. But then that moves this up. And that moves this up. And that moves this up. <laughs> so I have to move everything up. Oh, dear. Okay, and then I can move all this down. <laughs> You know what? The neck is a little bit tilted. I drew it way too straight. So I'm going to give the neck a little bit more of a tilt. I'm going to push this hair to the left because there is this very subtle curve. It's not as straight up as you might think. And then, oh, I didn't even put in the shoulders. That was really stupid. Okay, shoulder up there. And then... Mm, I don't know if that's quite right, but I'm just putting it there as a marker. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. I want to say thank you so much to Jill Kama for the super sticker because we always, always need your support. the case. Jessica is saying, I would love to draw portraits, but I've never done any, have no idea where to even begin to start learning. But yes, the thought terrifies me. It's a lot of pressure. We know what people look like. Your average person off the street can look at a portrait drawing. They probably can't tell you specifically what's off about a portrait, but they can look at a portrait and say, oh, there's something not quite, it's really, really hard. People don't feel strongly about painting an apple. An apple can be a little off and nobody cares, but the mouth, if there's something wrong with the mouth, people are gonna bother you about it. I spent a couple of years as a portrait artist doing commissions and it was hell. It was the worst job. People were just so terrible. Barbara says, when I have to adjust, I just draw new lines. Any way to lighten a line I've already put down. Well, you can certainly do a pass with your eraser, but honestly, what's more efficient is if you don't have to lighten it to begin with. And what I try to do when I first start a portrait, I draw crazy light. 
I draw so light that I almost cannot see my lines, but it's really efficient because then I don't have to do a lot of backtracking. I feel like that can be a problem. Just feeling like I'm not moving forward. Yeah, sorry, everybody. I'm having some lag. I think it's because the internet's a little wonky. It always seems to be doing that Sunday mornings. Not really sure why. Anna says, I feel less intimidated drawing in a sketchbook. I feel as though some of my best work is when I'm doodling. Yeah, lots of sketches. A lot of people think that if they do a portrait, it has to be finished. It does not. In fact, what I would recommend, go to our portrait track. If you don't know about our tracks, there are a series of video lessons and prompts, and you can follow them to develop a skill. Because a lot of people will say, oh, I want to get better at portraits, but I don't really know how to do that. And the, what the track does is it takes it out of your hands. It says, do this first, then do this. Here's some resources, here are the reference photos. So that way you don't have to work so hard to create your own curriculum. And the first lesson in the track is to do gesture drawings in tone and line of heads, I believe up to 10 minutes. So they're really short. A lot of people don't do gesture drawings of heads. And that's the issue. They try to dive into a super finished portrait and that's a really bad idea. Leslie says, I get frustrated with portraits too, but I just love doing them. Oh, I feel you. <laughs> I mean, portraits drive me crazy too, but I love them. You could tell me, Clara, you're not allowed to draw anything but faces the rest of your life. I'd be like, great, sign me up. <laughs> it would be full, totally fine with me because there's nothing more powerful than a face. A human face is how we communicate and you just can't beat that. So Christiana says, it's hard to start over but you'll be happier in the end. Yeah, because what a lot of people do is they say, oh, well, I really spent a lot of time on this. If I start over, I'm going to have wasted all that time. And that's not true. There's no amount of time that you can spend in a drawing that is a waste of time. It's part of the process. And so never tell yourself, even if you make a drawing looks like crap and you say, oh, I'm getting, no, 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 no. It, it's not like that nobody's going to hit a home run every time. I mean, what, if you're Derek Jeter, you're going to play a baseball game and get mad that you didn't get a hit every time you go up to bat? No way. That's ridiculous. Sophia says, is it okay to draw along, but with a different drawing? Oh, totally. I love it when all of you draw with me. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing. Pam says, you make it look so easy. You know what, Pam, I've been doing this a long time. And this is one of those things where the experience, it really matters. People think that, oh, I'm not very good. I'm like, no, you don't have over 25 years of experience drawing. <laughs> That's the, like how many people here can say with confidence, you've been drawing consistently a, a focused studio practice for 25 years, how many of you have done that? Okay, so you don't get to complain to me <laughs> that you're not as advanced as you would like to be until you've done that. Okay, I don't mean 25 years drawing once in a while. I mean, focused learning and practice. Not a lot of people have that. It's hard to make that happen for a lot of people. Jessica's asking, are the tracks on the website or here on YouTube? They're on the website. So go to artprof.org, click on the menu bar and click on free and premium tracks and then click on tracks. By the way, if you haven't used the website, everybody, the best way to use the website, use the search bar because the website is huge. There's so much on there. And so if you click in the search bar and let's say you type in soft pastel, it's good, it works. You'll find what you need to find. All right, let's take a look. Oh, geez. 
let's revise this. Okay, what I'm going to do now, this, this was the initial pass. I'm going to go through with a slightly darker color. This olive green is really nice. And actually, there's a lot of green in skin tone. For the most part, it's usually an olivey green because a bluish green, <laughs> obviously, that's not going to look, you're going to look like a Smurf. And so I love this green. It's a really nice neutral green. It's got a touch of green, but it's not, for example, like this green. Like this green would be awful for what I'm doing right now. Might come in handy later, but not right now. I like this green a lot better. Okay. I think I need to figure out where the eyes are, although it would help to get the nasal bone in here. And at this stage, I'm still jumping around a lot. You'll notice I'm not spending very long on any given part. Oh, geez, Deep D, you're making my life hard. <laughs> It's not her fault. It's just any portrait is making my life hard. And I'm trying to be very definitive. Oh, the lips already look really wonky. I think I made the upper lip not thin enough. So now I'm paying the price. So let's just make that thinner. Because really what you have to do with a portrait is you have to compare things. You have to say, which is wider? the nose of the lips, which is thinner, the eyebrow or the eyelid. I think I made the nose too wide. So that's how I'm figuring things out. I'm not looking at the lip in isolation. When I'm figuring out the width of the lips, I'm saying, well, how wide is the lip compared to the nose? So I say, okay, if the nose is here and I know that the mouth is further to the left, I have to really push that. That's how I know. And then these creases that are on the side, I'm making them more pronounced than they actually are because later on I'll go and I'll soften them. But for now, I need them to be more pronounced. And the chin, more substantial than I think it is. I don't think she has enough cheekbone on this side. Oh yeah, I think I have to move. You have to do so many adjustments. Never ever tell yourself that you're all set. I mean, even at later stages in the drawing, it's necessary. Who's drawing Deep Deep with me? This is going to be a trip for Deep Deep. She's going to have all of these drawings of her. I guess that's the equivalent of being an artist model. I mean, that's what happens. 20 people drawing you in all different ways. The eyebrows, I don't think they're as tilted as I think they are. I think they're just really specific. And you'll notice with the eye, that this top part of the lid, it's a lot longer than this part. The eyes draw, drive everybody crazy. Who here hates drawing? I, well, loves them at the same time. I mean, they're beautiful. They're so captivating, but you know who has nice eyes? Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. He's such nice blue. Oh my God, they're just gorgeous. <laughs> Although I, I have not, I've been on sort of a Benedict fast because I don't want to get tired of the same movie. So I haven't watched Doctor Strange in two weeks. <laughs> Taking a little Benedict break. I think it was Jordan who told me that he tries not to watch his favorite movies, quote, too much because he likes to preserve that. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to lean back. I'm going to look at the drawing from a distance. 
You should all do that right now. If you're drawing with me, step back, look at your drawing from a distance. Because honestly, that's the only way you're going to see proportions. When you're standing up close, that's not going to happen. Oh, this cheekbone does not look good. I think it's too low. Let's make it up a little higher. I don't think there's enough length here. Just get rid of some of this. I mean, th this is the hard part. <clears throat> People think it's the color and, and that's not hard. Th this is the hard part. This is the part where you're working out those proportions, trying to figure out where things go. And that's much harder than blocking the colors. I mean, you'll find that as soon as I get past this part and I start actually blocking things in, it gets so much easier at that point. Oh, God, I'm already thinking, what is Deep D going to say to me? <laughs> it's really, how many people here have done a drawing of somebody you know and had to show it to them later? Oh, that can be really stressful. I mean, when I was doing portrait commissions, I, I hated that. That moment when they see the portrait for the first time is just painful because the, they're never nice about it. I mean, it's like, dude, I'm trying. I really am, but it's not always easy. Okay, let's try to get more specific. Oh my God, the hair is so beautiful. I just, oh my God, love the hair. Who here does not like drawing hair? This is the confession stream to tell me all your deep, dark secrets as an artist. <laughs> the deep, dark secret as an artist is, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if it's going to turn out. I just am going to try. That That's that's the best you can do as an artist. You have to just try. Because a lot of people, when they're in my class, because by the way, we just finished a semester of premium tracks. And a lot of people tell me later, they say, oh, I thought you wanted me to make awesome work all the time. I'm like, I do, but actually what I care more about is that you're trying. You try something. That I think is extremely difficult to do sometimes. So I tell students, listen, as long as you're trying, that's what matters to me. I think the biggest bummer is when people are in a class and they stop trying that stinks i don't like that so as long as you show up and you try and yeah you're going to make a lot of bad work as long as you do that i i think that's fantastic that's a win how many people here feel the pressure that every drawing they do has to be good and that the last drawing cannot be as good as the drawing you're doing now. Like the drawing always has to get better. Guess what? Uh-uh. Progress is not linear. And if you want to get better at drawing, you're going to make bad drawings. You, you just have to. So anybody here, if you're beating yourself up for, oh my God, the drawings I did last week look better. And the drawings, and that's fine. Don't measure your progress in days. That That is dangerous. <laughs> I, I do not recommend that approach. I think the lips are definitely too big. Now that I've spent some time on the lip, on the hair, I'm seeing that. Because the lip gets really thin back here. I might be able to clean that up later. I think right now I'm getting too many lines and it's tough for me to see. So what I'm going to do is move back up here. I'm going to get the hair more solid and then we'll come back and start blocking things in. I do think the eyes need a little bit more work, but we'll come back to that. I just want to show that the hair back here is pulled back and that the hairs go in this direction. 
because really that's all you need in the beginning with the hair you just want to show the direction like i want to show that this hair goes down this hair moves this way this chunk of hair goes up and down that's what you need Gotta take a good look at the eyes. I still could be this one. Let's just move it over here. I should have gotten an eraser. Oh well. It's okay. I'm gonna go over all this later on, so I'm not worried about it. I still feel like mm, I don't know. When I'm working on a portrait, just nothing ever feels great. I think this one is still a little too big, but I think I'm picking now. So I think it's time to jump into some of the blocks of color and I'll make those changes later on. Oh, I still don't like this jawbone. I feel like I don't have enough of it. I think it's a little more of a tilt and it comes out a little more. No. I mean, the human form, it's so subtle. I mean, in a portrait, two millimeters makes a difference. <laughs> like you move something over just a little bit and they can look totally different. That's what's so hard about it. Yeah, I'm definitely picking. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Oh, actually I should add a little bit of where the shirt starts so i guess the shirt it's a little bit lower i think it's somewhere down here okay that's better because i'm not going to do a lot of the shirt but i definitely want it in here just as a piece of texture okay so that's the second pass that i'm doing on the line sketch let's take a look at what people are saying in the chat I want to say thank you so much to RB Dick for the super sticker. Keep those super stickers coming because you know what? Our Patreon went down so much in recent weeks. We were at 4,000 for a little bit, but it didn't last long. And now we're down to, I think, around 3,700. And you know what? For a small group like us, losing $300 a month, that's impactful. I know for a big company, it may not matter, but for us, we stretch every dollar so thin that $300 is kind of a financial hit for us. So we need your contributions more than ever. Jota says, hair is something I love to accentuate the face with. Hair is something I define 60% of the character with. Oh, I know. I just kind of can't believe that people could do a portrait, the initial sketch for so long and not add the hair. And I'm like so many people, their identity is in their hair. The way we perceive people is based on their hair. <laughs> Carolyn says, I find that when I try to put in shadows, I feel like I'm making her look old. I know. I've done that before where I try to draw a child and it looks like an old man. It's weird. I just think that doing a portrait, it, it just messes with you. Your mind is just, oh, it's really hard. Oh, I'm so happy that Gala is here joining you for the first time. I love your approach. Well, tell me in the chat how many people here here, is this your first time watching us live? Or maybe you recently found us? Because I think it's so fun when new people introduce themselves to the community. I understand that people are shy and may feel intimidating, but I love it. So say hello, even if you just say, hi, I'm new. I love it. Ginger Cell says, I did one of my sister. She thought it was creepy because it looked too much like her. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's no end. Oh, 
Jonathan says, I feel that you're drawing a face that's in your head. Maybe the face you see in the mirror every morning. Oh my goodness. So many times I've done a portrait and people said, it looks like you. I'm like, oh, like, that's just the worst comment. How many people here have been accused of doing portraits that look like you? I once worked on this very large mural and I had this large female figure in the middle in this movie theater scene. Oh, I was so mad. People were like, she looks like you. I was so annoyed. <laughs> we have a comment from Sarah who says, I was going to ask if you have any tips for kids portraits. Maybe we should do a stream on that because kids are funny looking. And actually, I think it was last week, Jordan and I did a stream on how to draw baby hands. I mean, basically you can't see any bones. So in my drawing of Deep D, I have the cheekbone, I've got the jaw, but I mean, on a kid, you're not gonna see that. And, and that makes your life harder, but also easier at the same time. And I think with kids, you have to emphasize the bulge of their bodies because all bulgy. <laughs> and you know what else is really hard about portraits is every single time without fail, if I post a live stream with a portrait, there's at least five comments. I don't think the eye is very good. You needed to move it to the left. And what's wrong with the nose? And why didn't you put it high? I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm trying. Okay. It's like, Yes, I'm using this photo of Deep D as a reference, but I just don't think it's helpful to nitpick like that. I actually had somebody, it was a couple months ago, it was so obnoxious. They were like, why are you even bothering if you can't draw it accurately? I mean, it doesn't look anything like the reference photo. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry you're so upset about this. <laughs> Let's see, Joey recently found us. Thank you so much for joining. And those of you who are not in the Discord, all the cool kids hang out. Don't you wanna be cool? <laughs> Maria is a first timer. I often give portraits some of my facial traits. It's very subtle, but annoying. Mm -hmm. Damien says, new on an actual live, very cool. Eliam says, first time catching you live, found our prof a week ago on YouTube, joined the Discord two days ago. Yes, we have roped you in. <laughs> okay, let's get back into this. And I think <clears throat> I'm gonna start blocking in some of the big shapes and what's gonna happen inevitably, I'm gonna lose some of this line work, which is fine, that has to happen. And so don't be worried if as you start blocking in colors that you start to feel a little shaky with your line work, that's okay. You, you really have to go through that. Okay. What I'm going to do, everybody do this with me. If you're drawing, I'm looking at the image and I'm squinting and I'm trying to figure out what the lighting situation is. And so I see a lot of light on the left side of deep D space. So I'm going to start it's more a yellowy golden, you know, I might just use yellow ochre. And it's too dark, but I think it's like the right color. And this whole time, it's all the side of the pastel, but I still don't wanna go in that dark. You can still see a little bit of the texture there and you want that. You don't wanna go in super, super dark. And actually let's just get in the yellow, a lot of people, they, they don't, orange rather, I don't know my colors. A lot of people think that the clothing doesn't matter. The clothing totally matters. In fact, the reason I chose this gray paper is because this gray paper is a little bit bluish. And I chose that because she's wearing a orange shirt. Orange is the complementary of blue. And I knew if I had a bluish paper, 
and I put orange on top that the orange would pop really well. So if you ignore the clothing, you better stop <laughs> because it's not a good idea to go into this without establishing that color scheme. How many people here, again, confession time, <laughs> do portraits, but don't bother with the clothing or you sketch it in, but that's it. You, you have to put this in that this is a game changer as far as how the colors go. Actually, this is too high. You can already see that. I'll have to get an eraser later to fix it. But yeah, it's all, oh, geez, I really messed that up. Yeah, the clothing is, because you know what else you can do too in a portrait? Look at the shoulders and ask yourself, is one of these shoulders higher up than the other? Okay, if you look at the photo, you'll notice this shoulder is lower than this shoulder. And so that's why there's a little bit of a tilt in this portrait. And so always look and compare those things. It's not that, oh, I drew the right shoulder or worse. No, I draw the right shoulder in relation to where the left shoulder is. Okay, and so that starts to capture a little bit better what's going on. Okay, let's block in the hair. I think I want a dark purple. I'm not really sure what color this is. So actually, it's a good idea if you have a scratch. Yeah, see, that's a little bit too blue. I think I want something more purpley. Maybe, oh, that's too light. Let me try this one. This one might be okay. Oh, that's way too light. Weird. It looks so dark. <laughs> it was really light. That's strange. Is there no dark purple? Maybe is this black? I can't really tell. Oh no, that's black. I don't want black. Black is really powerful. In fact, with black and pastel, you got to be careful because the black is like a nuclear bomb. It just destroys everything. Let me see if there's a dark purple. Why is there no dark purple? Maybe this? If not, I'll go with the dark blue. Yeah, that's too saturated. I guess I'm going to go with the dark blue then. Okay, it's not my preference, but that's okay. Okay, let's just block in big shapes for the hair. Now, see, by doing the big shapes around the face, I'm basically like closing in on the face so you'll see that a lot of people they just go right for the face and i'm like no actually working on the hair is going to help you with the face because now i'm seeing where things line up let me see because so i did want to fix this chunk of hair I'm going to try to be looser. I feel like I'm tightening up a little bit and that's not good in the beginning of a pastel drawing. You want, you want to stay loose. So let's loosen up a bit because <clears throat> I'm definitely not doing that right now. <clears throat> let's get, I think that's too high. See, now that I'm putting in the hair, I'm, I'm starting to really figure out where things belong. I think that's still too high. That, yeah, that's way too high. Jeez, that looks terrible. <laughs> Sorry, KT. Yeah, I'm really trying to, this contour is so, so important. I'm really trying to get it. Right now, I'm just blocking it in. Later on, I'll go in and I'll start to get a little more specific. But right now, I'm just using big, chunky strokes. And then back here, this section, the hair is very light. So I'm also going to change my physical pressure. And you'll notice that <clears throat> I always have a frog in my throat in the mornings. So you'll see up here, I'm pressing a little harder 
I'm pressing a little lighter because on this part of the hair, there's more lighting. And so this part of the hair is a lot darker. And so that's why I'm pressing a little harder. Still not all the way. Later on, I'm going to really go to town, but not right now. I'm not ready for that yet. It's hard to loosen up. Anybody else here feeling a little stiff? That's definitely how I feel right now. Yeah, we haven't done a portrait stream for a while. But we've been beefing up the portrait resources. And a lot of it is on rprof.org. How many people here, tell me in the chat, have been to rprof.org? And tell me what you've used on rprof.org. Because actually, I've been spending an absurd amount of time <laughs> building up rprof.org. But sometimes it bums me out because you can't comment on rprof.org. And so oftentimes I have no clue who's actually using it, what they're using it for. I mean, I can look at stats, but it's still not the same as YouTube where it's like I have comments and I can review the analytics. It's not remotely the same thing. So tell me if you've been to rprof.org and if you have, what have you used? Did you use a track? Did you look at a slideshow? Because we have so many resources and I think a lot of times it's just hard for people to find things. And I used to take that personally because I was like, oh man, I'm doing a terrible job. But I think it's just in general, when you have a big site and there's a lot of content, it's just gonna be hard. I mean, no matter, no amount of web development or organization on the site is gonna fix that. I mean, I could overhaul the website every year and there would still be issues. People would still say, I can't find this, which is why I tell people, listen, use the search bar, okay? The search bar works. And then the other thing on rprof.org is we also have table of contents and those are all linked on the front page. Because I do think the website is valuable in a way that YouTube is not. I mean, the tracks, like I could never do the tracks on YouTube. That just would never work. Okay, I think let's briefly block in the eyebrows just because they're quite dramatic. Don't wanna leave them out. And then I'll get into some of the more blocky stuff. I'm gonna do brown and maybe a little purple in here. I, I don't feel like blue lips are gonna look good. <laughs> so let's not do that. But I am gonna get into the eyes and just lock in a little bit of the pupil. So that way Deep Dee does not look like a great statue. And yes, I hate this moment. I hate the first time that I block in the pupils. <laughs> Because oh, it's like that's when it should be a person, but doesn't look like a person because it's too early. <laughs> but you got to live with it. And this is where just turning off your brain, not thinking, does it look like DD? I'm doing a bad job. Don't do that. That is the kiss of death. I'm going to overdo some of the upper lid because the eyelashes are quite pronounced and there are double eyelids. So I am gonna put in a little bit of that. It's hard, the eyes are so delicate. Okay, let's get a maroon color. This, this is brown, but it's got a little touch of red. And let's just do a little bit of work on the nostrils and the lip. And then I'll take a look at comments, see what people are talking about. Okay, now let's really spend time on this. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna zoom in so that way you can all see better what's going on with that lip. 
Okay, hopefully that's okay. All right, what I'm looking for is there's the middle of the lip, which moves down. And I'm trying to make sure the lip lines up with the nose. Oh, that's my problem. It didn't line up because this is the middle of the nose and the mouth is too, oh, okay, that's better. Okay, so let's move the lip a little bit over to the right. And you'll see this line that's in between the two lips, it is not a straight horizontal. Sorry. Trying to get my drawing book. Oh, no, that's way too far. Sorry. <laughs> I should put it over here. All right, here we go. And then look at the edge of the nostril. I think the lip should be like all the way out here. Maybe even a little more. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, let's move. Yeah, the lip was too far to the left. I had to move the center of the lip to the right. Okay, and then the lip on this side gets very thin. And let's make the lower lip a little thicker. It's a little bit better. But I do want to do a little bit of fixing on the side because now the chin is too big. Yeah, the nose is hard. The lighting is not that dramatic and so that is a little challenging i guess the reason i chose this photo because we had two and thank you to everybody who voted on instagram to help me choose this i really like this one because of the pose i feel it has a little more attitude i'm gonna come back here Oh, and also, you know, there's a beautiful cast shadow. Does everybody see this? There's a cast shadow here that's coming from that hair. It's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, because I really want to show this. Maybe I need... Oh, I think it's too far out now. I think I moved it in and now it's too far out. Okay, let me zoom out now that I am done with the lip for now. Okay. Yeah, I think this is all the way over here. Okay, well, <laughs> it's ongoing. Like people think, oh, you're done. No, you're not done with changes. There's a lot of changes to make still. And I think, I think the cheekbone is a little rounder, is it? Hmm. It's hard. How many people find themselves picking? at their drawing. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, and I'm already seeing a lot of green in her neck. So while I'm seeing it, I'm just going to toss it in there. And actually down here, there's quite a bit of pink, like a corally color. This might be a little bit too, oh uh, no, that's a little bit too orange. I feel like I need something more pinkish. This might be a little over the top, but let's just try it. Maybe just really lightly. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And then let's pull some yellow ochre over this. Okay, let me block in the rest of the face. And then we can take a look at the chat and see what you're all talking about. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So you can all see this a little bit better. There we go. Okay, now this whole section of the face is in shadow. And I'm thinking it's, it's very mild. 
saturation is pretty low. I think I need a darker version of yellow ochre. Let's see if that exists. See, this is a little bit, mm, this might be okay. Let me try this color. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, perfect. May not quite be dark enough, but I'll go over it again in a bit. And I can layer some lighter tones over it. Okay, and let's get a pinkish color for the lip just to distinguish it. I mean, I know this is too red, but I'll go back in and I'll fix it later on. So yeah, you can see I'm already losing the lip again, but you have to do that. You have to have certain parts, they come in and then you have to pull them back. There's a lot of green in this image. I need a darker, let's try this. Maybe if I press down hard, yeah, that's still not very good in terms of value. Maybe this color, let me see if this is brown. Does anybody else do this? You just have to keep testing the colors because you just don't really know what color they actually are. Oh, that's good. Okay, this is what I was looking for. It's darker brown, but with a tint of green. Oh, awesome. Yes. Don't you love it when you find just the right tone what you're looking for? Okay, now the shadows I'm putting in, they probably, for a lot of you, look over the top and way too dark. But with pastel, so much of it is layering. And so I'm putting this in knowing that, yes, it's not going to stay this way. Eventually, I will be changing things quite a bit. Yes, I know. It looks terrible. But, you know, it has to be that way. It has to start that way, everybody. You have to deal with it. Okay, let's see what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to make sure that this side is definitely brighter. And so I'm making this way too dark. I know I lost the nose. I can still see it. You may not be able to see it, but I can. It's pretty dark down here. So let's come back in. And this is actually one of the few times because of the lighting, the, the white of the eyes actually are pretty white. So I'm going to just block them in. Again, they're too bright. But I'll go back and I'll make changes. Because most of the time, the whites of the eyes are not that strong. But in this particular lighting situation, they are. Oh, man, Deep D, I'm sorry. You look very creepy right now. Oh, yikes. Let's just, let's just not think about it. Let's just look at. Oh, I'm so glad Deep D's not here for this. <laughs> Like, I'm so, I, I just would die if she was watching the stream. Okay, now let's bring back, I need some purple. Maybe this purple? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's do a pass of purple over that. I got to bring back the nose. If I don't bring it back, it's not coming back. So just a few strokes just to get it down. And also the, the lip also disappeared for a little while. So let's bring that back. I also think a little touch of maybe a coral color. I feel like this is really red. So I think just something to brighten the value. I think what's important when you're doing pastels, you have to identify, is it a color issue or is it a value issue? Because value is not the same thing as color. And I think a lot of people think it is, but it's not. Okay, there's a lot of pink in here. And a lot of pink over here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is really pull out the contrast so we can really show the lighting a little better. And for that, I don't want to use straight white. Maybe this, this color is nice. It's very bright, 
Oh, it's really yellow. I don't know if I want that. That's maybe too acidic. Maybe something like this, a little touch of red. Okay, let's put that in. Because I really, really need... this highlight to come forward oh that's way too pink maybe i do need that yellow is that oh that's actually pretty good <laughs> okay sometimes you don't know until you actually put it on the drawing how it's actually going to come out okay and then a little touch of highlight here and i want to keep that shadow that the hair is creating it's still too yellow but i'll go back and fix it i think for now it's giving me the lighting that i want and that matters more at this stage i, I have other points where i'm going to go in and make changes okay let's just go over the eyebrows because i lost them <laughs> And then we'll look at the chat. Sorry, I keep saying I'm going to look at the chat, but I'm like trying to focus. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm on a roll, but reading the chat does break up my groove. I mean, I'm not really having a groove right now. Okay, let's bring back the eyebrows. So you do have to do that with portrait drawing. You have to take things away. Ooh, sorry. Sorry, Deep D. You look like Maleficent. <laughs> that was not a good eyebrow. Okay, let's just give the eyebrow a little more form. Oh man, she looks evil in my drawing. Sorry. I gotta bring these. Shoot, I feel like I made that eyebrow too low. So actually, I'm going to bring in some pink in here. And that's going to let me move this eyebrow up. But even at this stage, I'm still making changes. I'm still moving things around. You have to be willing to do that. And then should bring the whites of the eyes back. I think this eye got too big. Crap. <laughs> crap, crap. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't on YouTube, crap is not the word <laughs> I'd be using. <laughs> yeah, that eye definitely grew. Ugh. It's too big. Let me just fix that scale issue because I know that's going to bother me. I think I got to bring down the eyelid a little more oh that's a bad shoot <laughs> anybody going into crisis mode because i am <laughs> okay now it's time for a break it's definitely time for a break everybody all right let me zoom out so you can all see what's going on Let's see what people are saying in the chat. Oh, I love this comment from ComCuke. You can figure out how to clean up a mess if you've never made one. Exactly. Joey says, observation is a good thing. I observe more closely when I'm drawing, even if the sketch isn't super realistic. I really think with drawing, seeing is half the battle. You have to be able to identify things. I mean, that's why I'm always telling people to, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so there are a lot of comments here, like Laura saying hair is not wide enough. Starving artist says maybe more hair coming down behind. Yep, yep, I know. I, I'm just right now, to be honest, guys, I can't hear those comments because it's too disruptive because there's all this stuff going on. And the thing is, the beginning of like the first half of a portrait, just so many changes. And I'm not there yet. <laughs> 
Jota says, controversial opinion. I want to paint realistic so I know that I can. I want to perceive and replicate my surroundings as precisely as possible. Abstraction I can do as an extra. It's up to you. I mean, some people want to paint realistically. Other people do not. I would just say, make sure you're doing it because you want to do it and not because you think you should or because you think, oh, I'm not allowed to paint abstractly until I can draw realistically. I don't believe in that. If you have no interest in drawing realistically, don't bother. <laughs> it's really a waste of time if that's not what you want to do. Raj Veer says, wondering if you have any tips for a beginner who's trying to draw, you think going through the drawing track would be good, or should I start with the basics track? I would start the drawing basics track. We don't have a basics track because it's too big of a topic. I think the drawing basics track is the best place to start. Watch the basics curriculum because that gives you the overview of basic skills. But then as far as actually doing a track, do the drawing basics track. Oh, I'm so glad. Fumi says, use the Flickr daily, but the website is really well organized. So it's really easy to find exactly what I need when I don't remember what stream or video. I'll tell you, I can't keep track of all our content. And the other day <laughs> I scheduled a video about digital versus digital versus traditional media. And then I was going through our list of videos and we glare, uh, oh, we already have that. <laughs> like I could not remember. So what I usually do is I'll go to artprof.org, I'll look at the search bar, or I'll go to YouTube and I'll type in art prof pastel and it, does a good job because it's a pain to go through all the clicks. I think the search bar is way better. I want to say thank you so much to Alexander Kong for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. And I believe I missed another super sticker. Yes, there's a super sticker here from Teener. Greatly appreciate. This is so helpful, everybody, to have your support. We need it because ArtProf is a really bad business model. It's really not smart to give away all your content and not charge for any of it. It's a terrible business model. Sophia says, wondering if you have a tip on how to make skin appear smooth with depth. I usually do hatching to create skin texture and shadow, but it doesn't give a smooth finished effect. You may have to try a different approach. Cross hatching, unless you do an absurd amount of like forever cross, you're never going to get it smooth. That's just the nature of cross hatching. If you want something smooth, maybe using something like soft pastel where you can smudge. But I'll tell you, Sophia, people often think that a face has to be smooth to look good. But even on a fairly young person who has pretty smooth skin, it's still got texture. And oftentimes I think when people make the skin too smooth, it has a plastic look and it can feel almost more like a doll than a person. And so I think it's really important to have some degree of texture. Obviously it depends on the person, but smooth is not always better. In fact, sometimes it can work against you. Oh, I'm so glad so many of you are using the website. That makes me feel really good because I spend so much time on the website. Mostly it's the tracks. I'm really trying to do the tracks. We have a fantasy illustration track coming up. We also have a drawing clothing track coming up and a landscape track was just added. Doing the best I can. The problem with the tracks is I'm the only person who can write them because if I have many people do it, it can get very inconsistent and confusing. And I think that as much as every track is different, they do have to have a certain 
consistency of format so people are not totally confused. We have a comment from Nancy, missed the beginning. Will you upload it later? All of our live streams, they post as a video later on. So you can always watch the playback anytime. Tina says, when you say there's a lot of green, I see it, but I'm not sure how much to add without too much. In my opinion, Tina, it's way better to add too much because you can always make it lighter or less. You can always layer another color. But I think what happens with color and with proportions is people, they'll try to get it, quote, accurate, close to what the image looks like. But I find that when I try to get the, quote, accurate color, it, it never comes out as dramatic as, it always ends up being watered down. Same thing with poses. If I'm doing a gesture drawing, and I'm trying to get a twist in a pose. If I try to draw it accurately, it, it's never twisty enough. <laughs> I always have to twist it more and then it works better. And so what I try to do with drawings, I try to exaggerate things, make them just a little bit more than what I think they should be. And that tends to work a lot better. The Only Fairy says, can you recommend some portrait artists like Egon Sheila, Francis Bacon, go to artprof.org, click on resources, and then artists. We have a huge list of portrait artists. Just Google them. All right, everybody, let's jump back into the drawing. Oh, actually, Barbara has a question. My pastels are starting to pill as I put more color down using Craypop pastels. Is this because I'm using a crappy brand? Oh, Barbara, it sounds like you're using oil pastels. That's inevitable. I'm using soft pastels, so I'm not going to have that. I do have clusters of dust that are starting to pop up. But yeah, with oil pastel, that's the nature of the material. It does depend on the brand. I mean, some brands are going to pill more than others. I tend to like oil pastels that are creamy. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but I don't like the ones that feel dry. There are definitely some that have a little more glide that I like better. All right, let's get back into this. And actually what I'm seeing, the eyes are definitely too big. <laughs> so I'm really glad I took a break and talked to all of you because now I'm seeing that. Okay, let's work on the eyes. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make them smaller. And definitely there's not enough red. Mm. It's so hard with pastels because no color is just what you want. You always have to layer quite a bit. I think for now, I'm going to go with a burnt sienna. Let's see. I need one that's got a lot of red in it. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's try this one. This is a very orangey burnt sienna. So I'm going to close in on these eyes. Just make them less pronounced. This yellow is definitely not good, but I'll get to it. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let me try, no, I think I need that blue again. You'll notice that I'm not using any black. The problem with black is if you put it down and you don't like it, you really can't get rid of it. Whereas these other colors, even this blue that I'm using, it's dark in value, but it's really not the blast of dark that you'll get with black. And so I really just, I won't use black until I'm 99% done. I might add a little spot for emphasis, but other than that, I don't really do that. Oh, 
it's so easy to just obsess about the eyes. Anybody else doing that? I totally am. Uh, okay, get away from that. I'm spending way too much time on the eyes. This is not good. I'm very disappointed in myself, not being a good role model, spending way too much time on the eyes. So I'm gonna move back down here. And now I am pressing harder. I didn't do that in the beginning, but now I'm gonna start doing it. And I gotta get this cheekbone really moving. And notice everybody, I don't smudge. I really don't like to smudge with soft pastels. I mean, I'll do it, but I find it makes everything just super mushy, which I don't like. That's probably a little too pink, but I think I'm going to do a passive yellow ochre over it. Let's see if this is the right one. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, because I definitely need... Here's the thing. It's like you have to differentiate is this color or value because here I'm noticing actually value-wise a little bit too bright. Okay, so let's go in. The nose is like gone. So let's definitely work on the nose. Nose is not happening right now. I'm going to have to shake this off. I'm getting a lot of dust. Because what you don't want to do with soft pestles, you don't want to blow the soft pastels because that'll make all the soft pastels just go into the air and you don't want that. Yeah, I am so picking. I know I should go back and work on the hair. I just, I don't know. You know that pressure where you're like, I got to get this solid. I got it's working and it's hard. It's really easy to just sit and pick. Maybe per oh, you know, there's a lot of purple here. Okay, the purple will help me, especially in the eye sockets. I think that's helpful. Yeah, good. Oh, and the note, yeah, okay. I need to make this crease a little stronger. Ugh, that does not look good. I think with portraits, it's like you just have to be willing for the portrait to look really bad for a while. It just, it has to. You you can't, it's not going to look good until like the last, well, hopefully, hopefully it looks good within the last little bit. It's just the expectation that it's going to look good while you work on it. That's ridiculous. Don't, don't ever tell yourself that because that is not the case. Still trying to stay pretty blocky. Okay, and I'm sort of losing this contour, so I'm going to try to bring it back, make it a little brighter. It's a little bit better. Okay, I think I need to shake this off because it's getting a lot of dust. So actually, let me pull it off the pad so I can shake it off, and then I'll bring it back. Okay. So this is what I mean by shaking it off, because right now there's all this dust. Okay, let's put that back and then we can get back into some of those colors. Hopefully that works. Okay, there we go. And actually, I'm going to adjust the focus while we're doing that. All right, hopefully makes it a little bit easier for all of you to see. I mean, unfortunately, the quality of the video, because it's a live stream, is just not going to be as good as, say, when we shoot on my DSLR. But the issue is that the DSLR videos that we've shot, we did quite a few in the past. They take so long to put together. They're just really time consuming because I'm the only editor. We don't have 
an editor on staff. And so, yeah, we'd get better quality, but you guys would get a tutorial like once every two months, which I don't think anybody here would like to wait that long, including me. I think I need this too pink. I need more of a yellow, but I want it to be a warm yellow. I wonder if this is too orange. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yuck. <laughs> I think we need, oh, geez, I don't know. Maybe this color. I need it pretty bright because it's a value issue that I'm trying to deal with here. It's hard because the lighting in this photo is not that dramatic. I mean, there's light, but it's not that easy to see. All right, I got to go back to the lip. The lip is really bad. Yeah, oh my God, the lip is a mess. Oh, the problem with the lip, you can't just draw the lip. You have to draw the space around the lip. So these supporting structures are very important. And I find what people do is they just focus on the lip, but you can't. Like this little pocket underneath the lip, that's pretty important. And even in here. And the filtrum. Oh, that's a mess. Ugh. Anybody at that point yet with me? <laughs> I think some purple will help because there is quite a bit of value, like especially the lower part of her lip. There's quite a bit there. I really want this edge to be more. Ugh. Okay, that looks really bad. Oh, sorry, Geeky. But see, it's like I shouldn't be even thinking about that. It's not helpful right now. Let's go back to that green that I had. I think it was this one. And I want to get it because she has this pocket. Everybody has these, these pockets on the side of your lip. They're so important because if you don't add them, it really does make the lips look like they're floating and, and you really want the lips to be in that space. Okay, I know she's looking a little bit like a raccoon, but well, let's fix that. I think adding the space underneath the eyebrow is going to help, and the eyebrows got too thin again. Who else is picking at their drawing? <laughs> if you're drawing with me, who else is picking? Because I am. I totally am. It's not good. And then there's a little touch of pink right here. You see this? There's a little bit of tissue. That is pretty helpful to have. It's getting muddy. But you know what? I'll go in at the very last minute with some black and we'll we'll add the stuff. I'm just trying to not do that right now because I'm like, don't do it. I'm not ready. This one really lost the double eyebrow. I don't know. This eye is like a lot rounder than I think it is. Okay, let's get in there. Jeez, I feel like I have to redraw the eyebrows like every two minutes. Like they keep getting smushed. And I do think the eyebrow want a little more and it does come up a little higher the eyebrows have such a specific shape maybe a little more up here 
Oh, see, I totally am ignoring this whole side. And actually, we really, really need some burnt sienna up here. And a lot of pink. Let me block in some red. I'm not going to keep it that red, but I'm just going to get it in and then I'll damper it so it's not so dramatic. Yeah, there's a lot of pink on this side. I just didn't add it yet because her cheeks are definitely a different color than, say, the chin. And let's redefine the chin. Working on that hair is helping me with the rest of the figure. I don't like this hair on the side. I think it's just, I think it's sticking out too much. I think it's more, it's less dramatic than I made it. Which is okay. I think when things are too dramatic, they're actually easier to fix because then you can just cut back. When something's not dramatic enough, that can be harder to work with, in my opinion. Okay, let's get some more value in here. So maybe some bright peach color and actually a little more in the eye socket to make that more pronounced. And I also, again, I keep losing things. <laughs> I keep like putting things in and then they disappear. It's this green, I lost this green. And then a little of the pocket. Let's bring back the lip. Lip is still shaky, I think. Oh, I'm picking, I'm picking, not good. I know I'm picking, I'm still doing it. Quit it. <laughs> Just stop. Also, notice that the upper lip is darker than the lower lip. And that's because the lower lip is at a plane. It's not as flat as you think it is. Then if I can maybe accentuate underneath the lip, that will be a little better. All right, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Carolyn says, I'm at the point where I'm not sure what to do and I think anything I do will make it worse, so I'm stopping for now. That's a good time to take a step back. I think that's a point in the drawing. I call it the plateau. <laughs> you feel like you're not done yet, but you don't really know what to do. And so sleeping on it overnight, looking at it the next day with a fresh pair of eyes is really valuable. I'm not into marathon drawing sessions. The only reason I'm doing it now is because it's a live stream. If this was not a live stream, I would have stopped by now and taken a step back and come back later. John says, I'm new to soft pastels. How would I start using soft pastels? I think it's a lot of sketching. I think what I would recommend, a lot of people are very heavy handed with soft pastels. And so you have to be willing to do a lot of very light sketchy stuff. I would not try to do a finished soft pastel drawing right away. I would do some pieces that just lay out the general idea and then move on. A bunch of short drawings, let's say 30 minutes to an hour. I wouldn't go longer than that because the setup is hard. <laughs> Lisa says, I drew Deep Deep's mother <laughs> and Artist's house. I drew her sister. That's really funny. 
Robin says, my attempt is also giving Maleficent vibes. I'm trying to bring back in some of Deep D's sweetness. You know what's funny? Sweet is the most common word that I hear when people talk about Deep D, including the staff. I mean, it's accurate. That's exactly who she is. But I think it's the tilt of the head in this particular photo and then the eyebrows being very assertive. I think also has that Maleficent vibe. But honestly, if, if you see Deep D as Maleficent and you want to do that, go ahead. People can draw the same person in completely different ways, depending on what you're trying to emphasize. Teresia says, been a while. I have an art group. We recently had a draw together, drawing an image from your Flickr page. It was so much fun. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's really nice that you have a group to draw with. Sophia says, when I start picking about an area, I know I got to go work on another portion. Yep, <laughs> of course. I knew it. I didn't do it. <laughs> That's the problem. So I feel like such a hypocrite. I'm like, you spend all day telling people all these things to do with their drawings, help, and you can't do it. It's really dumb. It's much easier to give advice than it is to take it. Nancy says, you recommend starting the sketch with hard pastel and then moving on the color layering with soft pastels. I'm wondering if I need pastels too. I do have Carbothello pencils too. I don't know what you mean by hard pastel versus soft pastel. If you're talking about oil pastel, I would never mix oil and soft pastel. I think it'd be a big pain in the butt. I mean, you could, but they are not materials that really work well together. So I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, let's jump back into this. Oh my God, I've been working on this for almost two hours and I feel like it's not even close. Let's work on the hair. The hair could really use some work and it just, it needs value. So what I'm going to start doing is just pressing really hard in the spots where I see very dramatic value. Right now, I'm just going to think about value. I'm not going to do color. Sometimes if you try to do both at the same time, it's not good. So I'm going to start with the side of the pastel like this and block in the big chunks like that. I got it handled. You know what? I totally ignored the ear. That is not a good idea. So I'm just going to go in and pop in a couple colors. So that way that doesn't completely get ignored, which I did. Okay, that's definitely not even close, but at least I have some colors in there as a holding place. So it's okay when you're working on a piece to say, I'm not even gonna think about color. I'm, I'm just gonna think about value because right now that's my concern is value. I need to get the value in and then I can think about color. Because the thing is the hair, it's not like it's the face. The face has so many different chunks, but this does not. And so I really think it's okay for me to do that. Don't try to tell yourself you, you have to do everything all at once. Like that's impossible. Nobody can do that. And so if it helps you to just simplify the process, That can be really helpful. I really wish there was a dark purple color that would really help me right now. Uh -oh. And you know something, I'm gonna have my orange handy because there's a lot of orange back here and the orange also has to be a lot brighter. So actually, let me just start blocking in because there's this really nice texture that's in the clothing that I definitely want to keep up. You know, I'm going to change the contrast a little bit. I think the contrast could be better in the webcam. 
yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Well, like in here, the orange is pretty dark. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in some burnt sienna. I think that's going to help me. So let's take some of that burnt sienna. Oh, that's maybe too brown. Well, I don't know. Let's leave it for now. But I do want to show a little bit of the stitching, a little bit of the direction of the clothes, just so we get a little bit of this texture down here. I'm going to do it pretty loosely. I don't need it to be that specific. I just want a little indication that there's something going on there. So that way, at least it's not like totally being ignored. Yeah, like under here, it's actually very dark. And oh man, this, this is hard. This shirt has so many little bits. Maybe on this side, I could show a little more value change. And it's getting there bit by bit. Okay, back to the hair. It bothers me that she is blue hair right now, but like, I know it's just gotta be that way for a little bit. I mean, this is the fun part. I, I love this part because I'm confident enough that things are fairly well laid out to a certain degree. This is the, easier part of the process. Really, does everybody remember how slow that beginning section was when I was just trying to get things in place? That's the way it has to be. And you know something, there are definitely many hairs that are off. But I'm not going to sweat it. Like, who cares? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think sometimes people equate accuracy with quality. And I'm going to disagree with that. Just because something is accurate to the photo, it doesn't mean it looks good in the drawing. And I'm trying to remember that. And actually, there's a little bit of skin tone in here. So let me add, what was that color? It's that corally color. Let's add a little bit of that in here just so we don't lose the skin in that area. Okay, we're gonna jump back to the top and I really wanna show the lighting now because you know what I see a lot is people, is that the right color? Yeah, I can use that. A lot of people, they'll do a good job lighting the portrait but then they won't do the lighting on the hair. And if you want to have the hair really feel volumetric, you really have to look at the light because really there's almost no hope of it looking volumetric if you don't have a good sense of lighting. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to try to get the lighting to be stronger. Okay, so if I want to do that, there's actually a lot of brown. So actually now I am going to start adding more on that side. Yeah, and that'll be a nice contrast between warm and cool because the blue is so cool, but then I'm adding some warm tones on top. And this area in the back might be a spot where I do want to do a little smudging just because the hair is so 
fuzzy back there. And they're also these little touches of brown. I think I need something a little bit lighter though. That's a little bit too light, dark. I can never find just the right color. Let's try this. Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. So you can see even down here, there are little patches of highlight. And that's what I'm going to focus on here. If there's a group of hair here, back here, this one falls down. And I'm still, again, trying to stay really loose. So down here, I'm going to do a little smudging. Yes, I know it's a mess. Oh, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> Let's just see if we can rescue it. And you know something, there is quite a bit of blue. There's like a blue highlight up there. Maybe I'll just use like a little gray. Get some of that in there. And there's a very bright highlight here. The hair comes down. I think what I'll do later on, I'll just get an eraser and erase some of that down because I definitely know that's too much. Okay, and then let's go back in again, another pass. So much of pastels is layering. Most of the time when people show me their soft pastel portraits and they're frustrated with the material, nine times out of 10, it's because they haven't added enough layers. A lot of people, when I look at their pastel drawings, I say, listen, you have to double maybe even triple the amount of layers that you have if you want to get the depth that you're looking for it really is necessary oh, i don't know why this section with the jawbone is driving me so crazy let's put the shadow back because i lost it a little ways it will help with that lighting situation. I mean, what I really want to do right now is like black, 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 <laughs> but I'm not going to, I'm going to try. It's really hard because I love black. It just, I don't know, black is sort of my default. It's so bad, it's such a crutch. Like I really should not be that into black. It, just, it feels so good <laughs> to put in all that value. <laughs> It feels amazing. And you know something? I'm going to let this whole lower area just descend into chaos. That's what I just, I'm just going to let it go crazy. I'm not going to do it yet because I'm not quite ready. But when I am, I'm going to go crazy. Because, oh my God, the curls are beautiful. This is where I'm just so jealous of people who have wavy, curly hair. It's just so pretty. My hair is so straight. And I was always so jealous of kids in school that had really curly hair. It always looked so pretty. Oh, I just want to go in and like go crazy. But I know I'm not ready yet. I need another pass on the face for sure but i'm getting there or i'm getting to the point where i just can't look at it anymore that's probably more likely that's the more likely scenario all things considered let's get some darker value at the top i feel like it's not dark enough losing that dark blue color here we go i think this needs to be a little thinner a little softer i think her neck is 
No, I think the neck just doesn't have enough shadow on it. I think it looks too wide to me, but I think it's because I didn't add this shadow. It's hard. It's like you have to figure out, is the neck actually wider or is it just the shadow that makes it appear to be wider? It's hard to tell sometimes. Ooh, I think I see a clavicle in there. Nice. Oh, and here's the sternocleidomastoid. Woo! By the way, speaking of the tracks, we also have an anatomy track, which I confess, anatomy is one of my loves. I just, I love it so much. And so I'd love it for people to do the anatomy track. I know sometimes people are very intimidated by anatomy. I get it. It's it's a complicated subject. It's not easy. But I've tried really hard to make it more accessible so people aren't so intimidated by it. So hopefully that is the case for you if you ever decide to do the track. Oh, shoot. I'm totally making a mess of this. Because I'm finding that I have been ignoring the neck. Not good. Now I'm paying for it. <laughs> but I'll tell you, one of the reasons I can work on this is because it's for a live stream. And so there's no stakes. I mean, other than DP being mad at me. But she wouldn't. She's so nice. <laughs> Yeah, the neck was, it didn't have all the shadows that I wanted it to have. That was the issue. So it wasn't actually too wide. It just didn't have that. Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Elian says, it's the same in digital painting. I used to struggle with portraits looking really flat. But now I add blue, orange, yellow, blue layers in my bottom layers, and the skin looks way better. Well, the thing you have to remember about skin, skin is translucent. Your body has layers and layers and layers of skin. And then there's all the blood and guts that are underneath all that skin. And so you can't treat the skin as one solid color. It would never work because it would look like a wool blanket. You know, wool blanket is not translucent. So you do really have to be conscious of the transparency that's inherent in skin. Wilmy says, didn't have time to comment, too busy drawing, but this is so much fun. I just used a graphite pencil, don't have soft best cells. Doesn't matter, use what you've got. And really, this should be fun. If you're drawing and you hate every, that's bad. You have to find a way to have fun. You got to make it fun. And that's not always the easiest thing. A lot of it's a mindset. But I'll tell you, talking with all of you is helping me because then I'm not real. Like if I was by myself, I'd be fixating, I think, 10 times more than I am right now. So what I usually do is I'll just take I'll listen to a podcast or something to take my mind off of the artwork. Although lately I've been listening to really trashy music. I'm so embarrassed. I was listening to Debbie Gibson. Does anybody here remember Debbie Gibson? Oh my God. <laughs> Debbie Gibson is my seventh grade existence. She was so big and I was listening to this, Debbie Gibson thing. And I was like, oh my God, I have not heard this music in, I think, over, geez, 25 years. I don't know. It's been a while. And by the way, this comment is way back, but I did see that Pat was saying that they enjoyed the Instagram post I did the other day because I just happened to be flipping through a whole bunch of old albums and I found these images of me painting at a summer program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. So I was like, eh, why not? Let's just post this. <laughs> Maybe it'll be entertaining for people. 
and maybe it'll help people just see that this is a long journey. This is not a journey that happens overnight. Social media may make you feel that way. But I, I think I've improved since I was 16. Only took, what, 20 years <laughs> to get to that point. Okay, I really got to fix this. This area is very mushy. I don't like that. I think... Ah, oh, that's too pink. I don't like that. I think I need maybe a light green. I think the nose is a little flat. And I want to go back in and give it a little more volume. So I think just pushing some of the highlights on the left-hand side will help. so flat. I know what I need. I think I lost the tip of the nose. I think it needs to be like all the way down here. And then the highlight travels up this side. And her philtrum, way too wide. Jeez. Gave her a really wide philtrum. That was a bad idea. Hmm. See, the stubborn part of me really wants this to look good, and I gotta quit it. Can't do that to myself. I mean, I think with every single drawing I do, I have to step away. So I don't think I'll work on it again on a live stream. But what I'm probably going to do, and I've done this in the past, where I'll just finish it later and show you all the results. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start pressing harder. I'm going to try to be more assertive with the strokes. Oh, it's getting really dusty. And actually, there was that really, was it this one? I can't remember which. Yeah, it was this one. Okay, this is a really nice color. It's a very like golden -y yellow ochre, and that's helping me. So now I'm going to press really hard. I'm going to try to really show the form more clearly. Because in the beginning of the drawing, I really was not pressing that hard. I am now. I am now going to whip it out. Actually, this is a very good yellow ochre. I'm pretty happy with this yellow ochre. I'm going to use this for some of the highlight areas. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, I like this color. It's good. That area is a little flat. That's the brightest out of everything, this one spot. So this I'm going to let get really bright. And just give it a chunk of, yeah, I don't know. I'm not pressing hard the whole time. I'm just, once in a while, I'm pressing hard. Whereas a ways back, I was never pressing hard. So that's maybe the difference, the way to explain it. Oh, I'm still not happy with the nose. By the way, if you are having trouble with the nose, watch my anatomy stream. That's about the nose. Because the nose is tricky. It drives everybody crazy. Who here doesn't like noses? Me. <laughs> but really, the issue with the nose is not that you can't draw it well. It's because they're funny looking. Noses are weird. It doesn't matter if you're Hugh Jackman. They're, they're funny looking. That's going to be the case. Feel like see i'm really trying not to smudge very much because i don't like the way the smudging looks but 
it is helpful on certain parts. It's just, you can't get too smudge happy. People start smudging everything and then you, you lose a lot of the structure of the face. And again, that's where it becomes like a mannequin. It's like, it looks too much like a doll. I just want to fix the contour of this. I feel like the contour is not great. And then I really lost this section up here. The edge is not great. Actually, you know what I should do? I should add that highlight back there. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I do that sooner? <laughs> Duh, see, I can't even take my own advice. I'm such an idiot. Okay, let's get in. Yeah, that's why I was having trouble with this because I wasn't getting very good definition. Okay, so this will help me with the contour that's happening. And actually, I'm also seeing that the hair was not high enough. So let's move this up here. Yeah, so make those changes, everybody. You need them. And that will help me. Oh, that's much better. Okay, all right. I feel better about that. Oh, that really helped with the cheekbones. Dude, why didn't I do that sooner? Okay, let's lock in that really bright shadow, not shadow, highlight. I don't know if this is too, that's too pink. I want something more yellow. Let's try this. Ugh, that's way too yellow. How about this color? Let's see if this works. Because this will give me the contrast that I am craving right now. Like that's a beautiful area of light. And actually the color of the paper is really similar. So I'm just going to keep the color of the paper for the other side. But this is going to help me quite a bit. See how that just grounds the portrait? It's really handy. And then I'll take some white and just really get bright white back here because that's like super intense value. Let's make this one really bright. And actually there's a little touch back here. So I'm going to add some of that. Oh, that really helps. Good. <laughs> Why did I do that sooner? <laughs> okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat before I do a final run of black. Oh, you're all talking about music in here. Good. <laughs> Starving artist says, after joining Art Prof, Anatomy is now Hugh Jackman, Michael Fassbender, and Benedict Cumberbatch. They are forever linked. Well, good. <laughs> I guess Matthew Good has not gotten the anatomy treatment yet. We've mostly been talking about his eyebrows and neck. I love his neck. <laughs> but uh, if you're a Matthew Good fan, there's a lot of naked scenes with him. <laughs> So we should have no trouble finding reference photos for anatomy. <laughs> Wilmy says, you're doing great, Clara. Love the hair, the color, and the highlights. Well, thank you. That's really nice. <laughs> Debbie Gibson. I know. I know. It's like my... Does everybody here have a closet Spotify playlist? Like... You have this play, but you don't want anyone to know you have it. That that's that playlist. <laughs> the one that has Debbie Gibson on it. It's also got Spice Girls. It's got some really bad stuff, I know. <laughs> uh, 
Lisa says, in real life, I presume it would be good to make several quick sketches of Deep D before doing one this developed. Oh, yeah. Any warm up time that I could spend working on the portrait would be incredibly helpful. That's why, if you missed it, I did this really quick one, this really crummy sketch first, because I just wanted to warm up. God, this looks like a bad 80s video. All the <laughs> scribbles and shapes. <laughs> Although, my kid is obsessed with Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. She has the exact same taste in music as Jordan. I really want them to hang out at some point. And she's very angry that I did not have her in the 80s. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> it's amazing how teens are so mad at you about everything, but they're so mad at you about the most funny things. I'm like, really? You're mad that I didn't have you in the 80s? I'm I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm a bad parent. <laughs> Who here has teenage kids? If you have teenage kids, could you please tell me this doesn't last forever? Because it's rough. <laughs> tell me something that I don't feel like such a crazy person <laughs> when it comes to being a parent. And it's like, you feel kind of bad because I don't spend a lot of time with them now like I used to. But then I think I need to give them their space, right? But then I think I want them to like me, hopefully. But then that's hard because I'm not giving them their space. <laughs> it's a rock and a hard place. Okay. It's a lot of green up here. See, I feel like I smudged too much. I feel like the face did get very mushy and that's bothering me. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fix some of the structural stuff, like this area around the lip, I think lost its structure. So I'm gonna try to put it back. I'm going to try to show my strokes more. I feel like I'm losing a lot of my strokes and that I don't like. Oh, I got to do another pass on those eyebrows because they're not looking good right now. Oh, I keep picking at this one spot. I feel like I, I it's like too far in too far out. Let's go back to the eyebrows. In fact, I'm going to do the eyebrows in black now. Actually, what I should do, I should shake this off because it's like full of pastel pigment right now. So let me take a minute and do that. Okay, that's better. Okay, now let's get back into that. Let me just put a little touch, you know, I'm going to find like a light blue, maybe light blue would be better for this one spot. Oh yeah, that's way better. Why didn't I do that before? I was doing white. Oh, that's picky. I don't like that. Okay, they're definitely like way too pronounced right now, but I'll go back and I'll fix it in a little bit. It's almost time to start bringing in some black. Yeah, I think that blue is a lot better. That white I had earlier was not looking that great. Okay. I feel like the nose is not good. I mean, I feel like any of this is that good, but let's just work on it. I feel like I want this nostril to be a little bit less chunky looking. It does sort of fade out. Let's go back to this mouth, which of course was bugging me and is still bugging me. I mean, poor John Singer Sargent. Dude had to do so many 
these society portraits, I'm sure they paid well, but it must have been a nightmare dealing with all those clients. A lot of this portrait's pretty subtle. I, I mean, I think out of a lot of the reference photos I could have used, this, this one doesn't really have great lighting. So it would not be my ideal piece as a reference photo, but I, I just loved the pose and the attitude. So I was like, okay, you know, it's all right. I can deal with that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get a little more purple into the top of the lip. And then let's try to get the bottom lip a little more volumetric. So maybe some pink pink like this. And then I also want to bulk up the bottom of the lip like here. So we really show that structure it makes her lip look a little bit less flimsy i mean that's what i think and then maybe a little more on the top i think we need some accent on the left hand side of the nose into that i had this burnt sienna. oh here this maroon color was great Let's use this very fine line there. Okay, you ready to go to town with some black? <laughs> We're gonna do it. Oh, this is such a nice comment from Laura. If you let them teach you about their world, you are showing respect for who they are now discovering, but still want you close. Oh, that is such great advice, Laura. Thank you so much. I love the way that you said that. Oh, good. I definitely listened to ABBA, <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> I have several. I also have... <laughs> Xanadu. Anybody watch that terrible movie from the 80s? Has Olivia Newton John and it's a really dippy <laughs> soundtrack. But I love it. And for real, I think that's nostalgia because nobody in their right mind would like that music. <laughs> it's really, really bad. Raven says, my kids are grown. Eventually you become good friends. It's great. Yeah, when? When they're 26? <laughs> I think it, somebody, I think it was Lauren and Alex said, yeah, around 25. That's when they'll be nice. I'm like, oh my God, that's a while. My kids are only 14 and 12. This is, this is not happening anytime soon, everybody. Who else has parenting advice? I really need some. <laughs> oh goodness, this is so good. Teenage years, says starving artists. Just another bigger, louder, more argumentative stage of toddler. <laughs> yeah, the thing is you can't reason with them. You know, on toddler, you can't reason with them. It's the same thing with a teenager. <laughs> Link is asking, can I Sharpie on the pastel? I wouldn't, I think in general, it might destroy your Sharpie, actually. <laughs> oh, good. Ginger Cell says, nothing but Hannah Montana, one finals week. Sometimes you need the trashy music. Oh, dude, I was listening to Savage Garden for a while. <laughs> you know why? It's because I looked up... I wanted to find Matthew Good in Downton Abbey because I'm like, I need to know when he shows up. And so I found this compilation 
it had a Savage Garden song on it. And I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I need to focus. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. Johanna says, less expectations, more appreciation will always build a solid parent-child relationship. I mean, my expectation is just please don't be a serial killer. <laughs> like, just don't do that, okay? You don't do that, we're good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do one more pass of highlight. And then I think it is time because yeah, I could pick up this more. I could pick up this all day, but I just don't think it's necessary. I think I just need to step away. So let me just do this a little more pink in a couple spots. Yeah, let's go to town. <laughs> let's do it. Some black. All right. Now we're going to, I'm going to let myself pick a bit. Where's the black though? Here it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is really like do some outlining. It's going to look really flat at first. And Deepti has brown eyes, not blue. <laughs> I really should fix that. And this I might do quite a bit of smudging. So like over here, I probably want to get the eyes more pronounced. And then there's like the makeup that she's wearing. And the eyelashes are pretty dramatic in this image as well. And she also has this double eyelid, so let's get that in there. Yeah, the eyelashes are a pain. And the thing about the black is you want it, you can use it, but you don't want to use it so it's really bold. Like in the eyebrow, I'm going to be kind of selective. Like I'm going to make it darker towards the bottom. And up here, I'm going to make it darker towards the middle. But then on the side, you'll see it trails off a little bit so just because you're putting down black it doesn't mean you should make it that dramatic another thing that helps with black is to smudge it a little bit so it doesn't feel too harsh in the context okay let's see if we can tackle this eye because the the eyelids are they're pretty pronounced up here okay that still looks weird but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in some like darker brown to tone down the black so the black doesn't feel so strong so that's the key to black is you just can't put it so harshly and now i'm going to do another pass of black to bring back some of the sections that i think i need like in here really can see some of the eyelashes i think i'm not making it strong enough yeah it should be more like here that's a pretty big shape I mean, I think makeup is hard to draw. If people are wearing makeup, I, I don't think it makes it easier. <laughs> I think it's a lot harder. Yeah, so like up here, we make those strokes a little bit more dramatic. Okay, now I gotta shake it off because there's all this black here. So let's go back. And now let's soften a lot of that stuff. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the brown. Let's just use the brown to blend. So I'm gonna put the brown like over the black. 
So I'm almost using the brown as a blending tool more than anything else. Let's see if that's a little better. Yeah, okay, cool. Because you can see when I first put in the brown, it was like really severe, it was too much. But now that I'm going back in, using the brown to smudge the black, it's working better. And then maybe accentuate some of the eye socket, like especially down here underneath. I don't know, sometimes I think people don't like to do the wrinkles under the eyes because they think, oh, it, it looks like they have bags under their eyes. That's like everybody has some variation on that. I mean, sure, some people it's more pronounced, but I think it's weird to not add them. Okay. Again, another pass the black. It's a lot of back and forth at this stage because a lot is established, but you have to keep moving. Okay, I do wanna clean up the eyes, the whites of the eyes. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get some like gray. So we're just going to take a little gray. I'm going to pull out how bright those white. This is so unusual. I mean, I don't usually see drawings where the whites of the eyes really are that bright. Most of the time they're not. Okay, and now I'm going to like really press down. And I'm going to let the eyes be more pronounced than I think they should be. I'm going to make them darker and a little thicker. And that's okay. It's fine to exaggerate what you see. Or to pull out a part of a piece that you think is more exciting and exaggerated, that really is fine. Okay, let's do a little touch of black in the lip. Not very much. I think I mostly just need it here on the edge. And then a little bit, just a hint, I don't want very much. And then there's a little bit of, again, that pocket. A little bit of smudging, not much though. I really try to not do too much. And Seeing a little bit here, I think this red is making her cheekbone look too small. So I'm going to pull that back. Doing some squinting. I'm going to do one more pass of red. Just through the whole thing, I feel like there's this pass of red that I need to get in there. Okay, and then also down here in the neck. Here's more sternocleidomastoid. Woo! Okay, and let's also a little bit more value here. I feel like the value here got a little lost. So I'm going to just toss in a little chunk of red. And that's going to help. Okay, you ready? We're gonna go crazy on that hair. You ready? This is gonna be fun. This is the part I love. Because you know what? I don't think the face is very good yet, but I need to step away. I'm really not 
ready to judge it right now. So I'm just not going to work on it until later when I've had time to step away. Okay, back. Ready? Let's do it. <laughs> oh boy, does that feel good. I don't want this edge to be super sharp. So I'm going to go in and do a little smudging. Okay, actually, I have pestle on my phone. <laughs> I can't see anything. Okay, here we go. The thing is, I don't want to use it everywhere, but I do want to just go a little crazy. really like this is where I'll do some smudging not a huge amount but it is helpful like especially in the neck a lot of the transitions are not that harsh and I just love stuff like that oh that feels great And I'm doing a combination. I'm doing some with the side. I'm also drawing with the edge. It's going to get really messy really fast. But oh man, this is fun. <laughs> this is the part I just, I, I knew when I saw it, I was like, I want to draw this hair. It's beautiful. So it's, it's sort of like, who here, when you eat candy, <laughs> do you save all the red ones for the end? I don't do that, but I know my kid does. It's like that moment, you get to eat them all. <laughs> I'm trying to see, I don't know what happened to the black with my Rembrandt. These, these are a little bit harsh, but whatever. Okay, so now let's get in some like, really like silky black. I mean, I am pressing hard now, really hard. Oh, that's so fun. Woo! <laughs> I don't know if anybody's still drawing, but we will meet in the Discord later after the stream. And I'd love to see what people made. I know this is a long stream, but I was like, I, I can't do this as a short stream. Like I'll, I'll just end up with a really scary wonky version of Deep D and embarrass myself. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna go really far today. Plus we're not streaming as often as we used to. So I was like, you know, if I'm gonna stream, I might as well just stream. My God, that's so fun. I just like love that. Not my drawing. I'm saying like, I just love the process so much. It's just so fun to draw this part of the piece. And I think here I do want to do some smudging, like really pull that black in there. Yeah, you got to be careful with the smudging though, because it can really hurt you a lot if you go a little too crazy. But what I try to do is I just add it in moderation. So I'll do like a, a swipe here, a swipe there. Or like over here, there's actually these hairs that kind of come up. And then there's like, you know, this hair. Feels really good to put that in. Okay, and now let's get in 
this really like harsh black. And actually I have to really blend up here too, because I don't want the hair, like that spot where it goes into the forehead, you don't want that to look too sharp because then it tends to look like a wig. Okay, well, even if the drawing doesn't come out good, I can say I had fun with this, okay? That, that's the takeaway for me. And here, I do want to get really specific about the direction of the hair. And then here, there's like a big chunk that comes down again. Oh, my pastel is not cooperating. Okay, so here I'm going to really smudge because I really want that to be soft. I do think a little, there's like a little hair here. So I do want to make this a little darker. Oh, do we have a spam bot here? Let me see if I can get rid of them. Hmm, I don't see that. All right, well, if I see it, I'll get rid of it because we can, we can put people in timeout on StreamYard, it's awesome. adults should get time out you know some of them need it <laughs> i feel like i do need to make this spot more clear where the orange outfit i i went a little crazy with the hair down there Okay, I'll do another pass because what I have to do now is shake it off. There's just so much pastel. And I do want to get some lighter brown on the left hand side. There's this like goldeny brown color back here. And this, again, I think I need an eraser because I think I just went way too dark on that spot. Okay, let's shake it off and see where we are. All right, one more pass on the hair. We're going to look at the eyes again. I feel like I need like a Q-tip or something to smudge this because my fingers are like too small, too big for that. Okay, that's getting a little better. And then, ooh, this is my favorite part, everybody. You know this? Ah, oh, that feels good. <laughs> a little too bright. But it is nice to have that little glint of white. I'm going to give the nose a little bit more contrast. I still feel like it's too dark. Maybe just a little bit of white. And then maybe in the lip, that's a little bit better. Okay, one more pass with the hair. 
But actually, I think what I'm going to do with the hair, I'm going to add a little bit, some touches of brown. Because I think the blue is still, it's a little bit too prominent. Yeah, I need a lot more brown. Like in here, there's all these highlights. This to me is the fun part where you get to just add all this extra stuff. It's great. And actually, there's quite a bit of brown up here, too. I'm sort of surprised by that. It doesn't seem like it would be. It's very blue from what I can see. But I don't know. I like the blue shining through. I think it's nice. Although I'm letting the brown take over a little bit. I think that's okay. This should be really black, actually. This whole spot. Make it really big and black. Because I do like having spots where the hair gets a little boring. And it just is a little more plain. But it's like you need that. You don't want everything to be super dramatic and strong. Okay, so another pass of brown. to show off some of the volume of the hair. And I'm really trying to show chunks of hair. Oh, I feel like I missed this entire curl down here. I think I'm going to do one more pass of smudging. Just to simplify the hair, because the hair, obviously, it gets rather complicated. And then it's so busy that it can be a problem. Mm. I'll glue up here at the top. I'm just shaving a little bit of the top of the head. I guess what I'm doing now, I'm just going through and I'm simplifying. Because oftentimes I think I just add too much contrast. Oh, actually, we really need it here. This spot is pretty dramatic. Okay, and then let's do another pass of black over that. Bring it all together. You can see I, I cheated a little bit. There's no ear anymore. <laughs> I don't need it. Like I don't need that in my life. Okay, and then there's like a division back here of the hair. So I do want to just show that change. There's another chunk back here that I sort of ignored. Okay, and then some smudging here. This hair I think should be more dramatic. And then the hair on this side really does not need that much more. I'm just going to do another pass on this curl because I feel like this curl, it got a little mushy. I just want it to be more sharp. I'm going to have more volume. Okay, let's do some squinting, everybody. There's definitely stuff that I'd want to look at again, but this is definitely that point where I just need to step away. I can't look at it anymore.
course, as I say that, I'm adding more to there. <laughs> because I love these streaks that care are so lovely. Oh, now I think I killed it. <laughs> That's okay, I'll just go back in and add some more of these highlights. I think that's as far as I'm gonna get with this because I need to step back, look at it again and I'll probably work on it some more. Laura King says, I love that you use all of your drawing materials in a painterly way. Gorgeous. Thank you. I mean, that's my personal taste. That doesn't work for everybody. But I do tend to like drawings that are looser and more gestural, even if they're finished drawings. Link says, this has been a nice way to open my morning. Thanks for the good vibes from all. Thank you so much, Clara. Awesome. Jesse's asking, I am using Rembrandt pastels. These I really like because they're just nice and soft. They're expensive though. So they're not really that affordable for a lot of people. And then I have these, which are a whole line soft pastels and this is a pretty big set they're not as round as the rembrandts but they're fine i tend to like the rounded ones better but to me it's not really a huge difference jane says i left my dp deep d with some blue hair almost like a blue light shining on her. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, everybody. I hope that you will join me in the Discord. I'm going to be hanging out in the post live streams channel. If you did a drawing of Deep D, I hope that you will share yours with me there. And I want to say a big Thank you to our top Patreon supporters. You are the ones keeping us up and running. We need your support at Art Prof now more than ever. So incredibly helpful to us to have your help. We greatly appreciate your support. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.